Okay, program seven. Are you ready on the graphics there, Graham? Yep, yeah, okay. This is something about being an adult, I think. Adult. No! <laughs> oh, something which won't happen to me. Yeah, I've got to find a wife first, but do not commit adultery. Ready? Okay, we're going to go into that song. Five, the ten. Yep. Yeah. Sam, can you get the right song on? Thank you. Ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Love God for love God's name, and they honor your parents. Don't kill, don't break your vows, don't steal and don't lie. Don't covet what somebody else has. Love God first, love God for love God's name, and they honor your parents. Don't kill, don't break your vows, don't steal and don't lie. Don't covet what somebody else has. Love God first, love God more. Love God and they honor your parents. Don't kill, don't break your vows, don't steal and don't lie. Don't covet what somebody else has. And I'm here to do Smile Mega Phrase. And these are reinforced because this series is based on Ten Commandments. These rules were given to Moses by God. They are rules so we can walk the right path with Jesus. 
They are not there to spoil our fun. They are there to protect us. Remember, wear a smile. One size fits all. What we're going to do is go through these mega phrases and we're going to go through them a couple of times so we can remember them. Are we ready, children? Here we go. This is smile phrase number seven. Do not commit adultery. And that is in the Old Testament in the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 14. Can everybody say it with me? That is, do not commit adultery. Exodus 20, 14. Right, over to Justin with news. Justin. This is Justin with the news. Justin. The Ten Commandment epidemic is growing. Please be on your guard for this deadly sin disease. It is spreading at a tremendous rate. This week we have reports in of the sin, adultery. This is widespread amongst the adults. No, it's not another word for being grown up. It is cheating on your partner when you are married. It is very sad. We live in a world where even on the internet there are sites which promote how to have an affair without being caught. The next article is of such a woman caught in this act, brought to you by Max. Over to you, Max. This is Justin with the news. Justin. I have a story I want to share with you. It's about me, I remember it so well. It was a quiet day in the old history museum in Pioneer Road. Not too many people had come to view the ancient treasures of times gone by. The truth was that the museum just didn't have any new items to display. So once people had been to visit, they really didn't need to come back again. I sat in my little office, which looked more like a store cupboard than an office. It was as always piled high with old books and pictures and piles of paperwork, which should have been cleaned away months ago. I was so bored. I really enjoyed my new job at the museum. My job is to date any ancient pieces to the correct pastime, and I clean them up to go on display. But recently, there were no new items coming in, and each day just ticked by with nothing new to do. I was sat this particular day, my MP3 player on, listening to recordings of Crystal and the Soft Touch and the Hands Up Band. It wasn't long before I drifted off into a daydream. Most of my dreams I had, and still do have, about ancient times. My favourite stories are from the Bible, about Moses and the Ten Commandments, and King David and Jesus' disciples. How awesome it must have been back in those days. Suddenly, I heard a voice in my headphones. Max, I want you to become one of my agents. I have a special mission for you. I looked around. Where was this voice coming from? Who's there? I said nervously. It is God, returned the voice. I need you to go on a special mission for me. Of course I wouldn't refuse. I knew it was God talking to me and was happy to do anything he asked. The mission is, I want this museum to be full of people again because the money the museum makes goes towards helping poor people in the world and spreading my name to the lost and unbelievers. I know, Lord, I replied, but how can one person like me bring people into the museum? We need new and interesting things to show them. If you go outside, I've given you a car. Now look after this car. It is very special, God said. A car? How is that going to help the museum, I thought. I'm happy to have whatever God gives me, but wouldn't it be better to have something that I can use to help? This will be of help, God replied. I couldn't wait. I left my office quickly. I was so excited about my new car. I raced down through the empty corridors of the museum, out the front doors, and there it was. A beautiful car, it was immaculate, it was a lovely shiny red colour. But as the sun shone down onto the car, the car seemed to change colour. It glowed bright yellow, this made me squint my eyes. God's voice came to me again, do you like it? Yes, it's fantastic, but I would still rather you gave me something to help the museum, I replied. This will help Max, it isn't just a normal car, this is the smile machine. I didn't really understand, but I opened the door and jumped in. It was like Christmas and birthday rolled into one. But what made it so fantastic was that God himself had treated me to this cool car. Now listen carefully, Mighty Max. 
This car is no ordinary car. The first thing you need to know is that I can transport it to any time or place I choose. And when you get there, it will assume the looks of vehicles from that time. For example, if you go back to the River Nile in Moses' time, it will assume the look of a local fisherman's boat. This will mean that you won't stand out to the people of that time, God explained. Hold on a minute. I couldn't believe it. Are you saying that the smile machine is a time travel machine and can become any vehicle it needs to become? Yes, that's correct, God said. You learn quickly, Max. I knew we had chosen the right superhero for this mission. Wow, so you are going to send me back into old times to find pieces from the museum, and that will then bring people into the museum to view these treasures and create money so that the museum can help poor people around the world. It's a great plan, God, and I'm ready for the mission. I was so excited. One more thing, Max. In the passenger seat, you will see a watch. This works like the car and will change your clothes so you are wearing into clothes of that period in time. I get it, so I can blend into the times I'm in. Cool. Here's my watch. Do you like it? I typed into the small computer on the dashboard, waiting for God to reveal his first mission and destination. I was very nervous and my hands shook as I typed. But through the shock and nervousness of what was happening in my life, I felt a real peace about it. I was so privileged that God chose me for this assignment. I knew that it could get dangerous, but God would be there with me at all times. I was unsure of what I would be able to bring back to the museum, but I trusted in God and was eager to start this amazing mission. A yellow smiley face appeared on the screen of the vehicle, and I pressed my thumb onto the keys to accept the mission and get underway. A smiley face on the screen acknowledged me and the smile machine started up. Immediately the car moved and I held onto the steering wheel. The smile machine built up some speed. The outside world was beginning to go all blurry and I couldn't make out any objects. The smile vehicle seemed to be going so fast now that I felt like I was on a roller coaster. I gripped the steering wheel tightly and shut my eyes to pray. I felt sick. Lord. I really want to serve you on this mission and I ask for your protection. Cover me as I head into unknown dangers. Suddenly the car slowed down. As I strained my eyes to see anything through the windscreen, it was still too blurry, the car came to a halt. The smiley face appeared on the windscreen and said, destination arrived. I put on my watch and instantly my clothes changed to a long sack cloth style outfit. It was the full length of me and my cool trainers became old leathery sandals. Just as well my mates can't see what I'm wearing. We have to be fools for Christ sometimes. The smile machine had changed into a donkey. I stood trying to get my head around this whole situation. Then a flash came on the donkey's ear and Titan it told me I was back in time of Jesus. Wow. God gives only the best for this first mission. I read my Bible and had read all of the New Testament again and again. If you haven't read any of it, children, you must. It's a brilliant book. Ahead of me, I could see a large crowd of men. I dismounted my donkey, which was of course a smile machine, and walked towards the crowd. There was a woman among these men who was half clothed. There was a gentleman sitting on the floor. He seemed to be ignoring the men and was just doodling in the sand with his finger without even looking. Then he stood up and said to the men, whichever of you men is without sin, let him throw a stone at this woman first. As soon as I heard this voice, I knew it was Jesus. Wow, right in front of me was Jesus. I wanted to go and hug him and introduce myself, but it didn't seem quite the right moment, so I just stood and watched from the back of the crowd. I was puzzled. Why would these men throw stones at this poor woman? Then to my astonishment, one by one, I heard fuds on the ground as these men walked away. Stones and boulders fell from under their robes. They hung their heads in shame and walked away. I looked down at all the stones on the floor. Then to Jesus and the woman. Jesus rose to his feet and spoke again to the woman. Where are the men who accused you of committing adultery? Has no one thrown a stone at you? The woman shook her head and hugged Jesus. The penalty in that day was to throw stones at the people who were breaking their vows of marriage. Jesus then said, then I do not. Go and don't do it again. This is the lady who was caught with another man who was not her husband. This poor woman had probably been set up and used just as so these men could catch Jesus out. That man may even have been in the crowd for all we know. Poor woman. 
But Jesus showed love, probably which he had never really experienced before, and forgave her. I had worked out what part of the Bible I had just witnessed. I picked up a rock and slipped it under my tunic, then jumped back on the donkey, pulled his ear, and before I knew it, I was back in the museum in my chair. I opened my eyes. I thought maybe it was a dream. Or was it? Just get a smile in, yeah? Look into the camera, Heather. I oh, wish she got... Yeah, there she is. Right, ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Heather here, bringing you the weather. Well, today across the world, the weather is going to hurt. Yes, I repeat... The weather is going to hurt. My friend Dale, Dale Hale, says that there will be a lot of noise on tin roofs or glass roofs. A hailstorm is coming. Stay in and watch me. If you must go out, wear a duvet. It won't hurt as much. When the hail hits you, you feel like a little pebble has been thrown at you at great speed. Okay, time for me to go. This is Heather with the weather. Lovely. And remember, God created the weather. Come on then, Lorna, let's go no, to the back page. No, no thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes, we decided that you would be the mail. I would do the express. Oh, Gordon, Lorna, tea? Cake? Would you like some tea or cake? Lorna, Gordon, Lorna. Sounds like a bit of a domestic. Oh, you see this? No. I hope they don't break their vows because of falling out like this. Don't want to break the Ten Commandments. Must pray for them too. Rise up, church, with broken wings. Right, come on. Lighting on the faces. That's it. Good boy. Right, OK. Red on the faces. Remember that. Don't want anything messing up. Right. Thank you. 
rep on programme seven. That was brilliant, weren't it, Grime? <laughs>